Hello, fellow pastors in Uganda. I greet you in the name and the love of Jesus Christ as I send this encyclical video to the pastors of the churches of Uganda with greetings from your fellow pastors all around the world. May grace and peace be with you this Christmas season. We're all familiar with Edmund Burke's insight that all that is necessary for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And that's why I'm sharing my heart with you today. As an American pastor, it's not my role to interfere with the politics of other nations, but it is my role to speak out on moral issues. And it is my role to shepherd other pastors who look to me for guidance. And it is my role to correct lies and errors and false reports when others associate my name with a law that I had nothing to do with, I completely oppose, and I vigorously condemn. I'm referring to the pending law under consideration by the Ugandan parliament known as the Anti-Homosexuality Bill. Now, as a pastor, I've found that the most effective way to build consensus for social change is usually through direct, quiet diplomacy and behind-the-scenes dialogue rather than through the media. But because I didn't rush to make a public statement, some erroneously concluded that I supported this terrible bill. And some even claimed that I was a sponsor of the bill. Now, you in Uganda know that's untrue. I'm releasing this video to you and to your congregations to correct these untruths and, in addition, to urge you to make a positive difference at this critical point in your nation. Now, we can never deny or water down what God's Word clearly says and teaches about sexuality. At the same time, the church must stand to protect the dignity of all individuals, just as Jesus did and He commanded all of us to do. Now, let me be clear. God's Word states that all sex outside of marriage is not what God intends. And Jesus reaffirmed what Moses wrote, that marriage is intended to be one man and one woman committed to each other for life. Jesus also taught, though, that the greatest commandment is to love our neighbors as ourselves. And since God created all, and Jesus suffered and died for all, then we are to treat all with respect. The great commandment has been the centerpiece of my life and my ministry for over 35 years. Now, of course, there are thousands of evil laws enacted all around the world, and I can't speak to pastors about every single one of them. But I am taking this extraordinary step of speaking to you, the pastors of Uganda, and the spiritual leaders of your nation, for five reasons. First, the potential law before your parliament is unjust, it's extreme, and it's unchristian toward homosexuals, requiring death penalty even in some cases. And if I'm reading the proposed bill correctly, this law would also imprison anyone uh, convicted of homosexual practice. Second, the law would force pastors to report their pastoral conversations with homosexuals to authorities. Third, it would have a chilling effect on your ministry to the, to the hurting. Now, as you know, and I know, in Africa, it's the churches that are bearing the primary burden of providing care for people infected with HIV and AIDS. If this bill passed, homosexuals who are HIV positive will be reluctant to seek or receive care and comfort and compassion from our churches out of fear of being reported. You and I know that the churches of Uganda are the truly caring communities where people receive hope and help, not condemnation. You know that. Fourth, all life, no matter how humble or broken, whether unborn or dying, is precious to God. My wife Kay and I have devoted our entire lives and our ministry to saving lives, to saving the lives of people, including homosexuals, who are HIV positive. It would be inconsistent to save some lives and wish death on others. We see, we're not just pro-life, we are whole life. Finally, the freedom to make moral choices and our right to free expressions are gifts endowed by God, our Creator. Now, Uganda is a democratic country with a remarkable and wise people. And in a democracy, everybody has the right to speak up. And for these five reasons, I urge you to speak up. The pastors of Uganda speak out against this proposed law. My role and the role of the peace plan, whether in Uganda or any other country, is always pastoral, never political. 
I vigorously oppose anything that hinders the goals of our peace plan, which is P-E-A-C-E, -E, promoting reconciliation, equipping ethical leaders, assisting the poor, caring for the sick, and educating the next generation, which, by the way, includes the protection of children. Now, you need to know that the people of Uganda are in my constant prayers. And this Christmas season, I pray that you will experience the three purposes of Christmas, as announced by the angel at the very first Christmas, the birth of Christ. Do you remember the first thing the angel said? I bring you good news of great joy. Christmas is a time for celebration. Jesus is the good news for the whole world. And God came to earth to be with us. Then the angel said, for unto you is born this day a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. Christmas is a time not just for celebration, but for salvation. He sent a Savior. And if we didn't need a Savior, believe me, God would not have wasted the time to send one. Finally, the angel said, peace on earth, goodwill toward men. Christmas is a time for reconciliation. Salvation, celebration, reconciliation. The message of Christmas is good cheer, good news, and goodwill for the whole world. It's my prayer that the churches and the people of Uganda will experience all three of these this Christmas season. May God bless you, and may God bless the nation of Uganda.